One of the consequences that arises when matter behaves as waves is that it no longer becomes possible to simultaneously measure certain properties. We know this as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, and uh, I want to just write down sort of the most uh, common way of expressing this concept. It basically says that uh, if we have some uncertainty in the measurement of x, um, and multiply that by the uncertainty in the measurement of the momentum, p, that this always must be greater than or equal to um, some minimum value, which is uh, denoted by Planck's constant. And I'll remind you that h bar is h over 2 pi, so this is really h over 4 pi. Now, a lot of times this is stated without uh, explanation, and, um, you know, we're left to wonder exactly what does this delta x and delta p really mean. I want to put a little bit more uh, meat on the bone, if you will, and uh, talk about what we might do to uh, clarify this a little bit more, but also talk about the uncertainty principle not as a means of generating uncertainty, which is kind of an unfortunate term, but as a means of determining that there is an imprecision in how well we can measure things simultaneously. All right, now, when we're talking about, uh, you know, probability and statistics, there is a particular way that we would define something like a delta x. In fact, we would define delta x as being somehow related to the variance, the statistical variance around a certain um, possible outcome, and that variance and I'll call it sigma sub x, I'm going to take the square of that, um, can be set equal to the expectation value, the average value of x squared, minus the average value of x quantity squared. Okay, notice that these are different. When the square is outside the brackets as it is here, uh, this is a different quantity than this. Okay, but now we have a way of calculating those expectation values over a quantum wave function. So in fact, we can begin to actually define what this variance is over a wave function, say, of the uh, particle in a box. Okay, we would have a similar sort of expression for p. So for example, I have the variance squared of p would be the expectation value of p squared minus the expectation value of p quantity squared. All right, so how would we go about doing this? Well, first of all, we need to generate each of these expectation values that are indicated here in the way that we have prescribed. So for example, the expectation value for x would simply be, and again, rather than going from minus infinity to infinity, we're just integrating over the extent of the box, but it would be the wave function for the particle in a box in state n times x times the wave function of the particle in a box dx. And I might want to put that x hat there just to indicate that this is serving as an operator in this particular case. But that means it's an integral that looks like this. Okay, when we plug in all of the various pieces, it'll be sine squared of this times x. And uh, I'm not going to go through the details of figuring out these integrals. Uh, they are possible to do. They're actually not that difficult, um, but it doesn't really serve us much to give a math lesson for how to perform these integrals. But I can tell you that this one will turn out that the average value of x would be L over 2. Now, this kind of makes sense. When we draw the particle in a box, it goes from 0 to L. This is the midpoint here. And so we have all of these functions are going to have some kind of symmetry relative to this midpoint. So it makes perfect sense, you know, ground state, uh, the excited state. It makes perfect sense that this would turn out to be the average value for the position of the particle, no matter what. It's equally likely to be found on the left side of the box as it is on the right side of the box. So L over 2 makes good sense. Similarly, if we were to calculate this sort of thing for the momentum, we would find that uh, this now would be uh, integral 0 to L. Now I actually do have to fill in what that uh, what that p operator is. I'm going to put minus ih bar d dx psi of x dx. And in this case, if we work through this integral, we took that derivative and worked through that integral, we would come up with a value 0. 
And again, this sort of makes sense. It is equally probable for the particle to be moving this direction as it is to be moving that direction. So the average momentum over this box must be zero. Now, doing the ones for uh, x squared and px squared and p squared are a little bit more involved, and I, I won't go through them in too much detail. However, I'll indicate that the uh, expectation value for x squared has this um, rather involved formula. It's equal to 4n squared pi squared over 3 minus 2. All right, so not exactly uh, one that you might expect intuitively, but nevertheless, you can find this result by doing the appropriate integral under the, over the particle in a box wave function. Similarly, we could find the uh, value for the expectation value for p squared. Now, I'll point out that this one's a little bit easier because p squared is actually related to the energy. Remember that the particle in a box has a Hamiltonian operator, that's just minus h bar squared over 2m times d squared dx squared. Okay, or another way of saying this is that it's equal to 1 over 2m times the momentum operator squared. So this momentum operator squared is just the same as the expectation value over a state of the particle in a box of 2m times the energy. Okay, and we know what the energies of the particle in a box are. They are given by h squared n squared over 8m l squared. So the m's will cancel, the 2 will cancel with the 8 to make a 4, and we'll end up with a value that is n squared h squared over 4 l squared. So this is the value for p squared. All right, so now what am I going to use this for? Well, I have now a means for calculating these two variances. So let me change color and uh, sort of highlight what this is. What I want to do is now calculate the product of these two variances. Now, remember the variance is the square root of this number that's given up here or this number that's given up here. And uh, so I'm going to have to figure those square roots out. Now, if I take if I take x squared minus x quantity squared, that will give me a, a rather cumbersome uh, expression of L squared over 4N squared pi squared times N squared pi squared over 3 minus 2 when I subtract the uh, expectation value of x. Similarly, my x my square variance for momentum, since the momentum expectation value is zero, it's just going to be the square root of this quantity here. So that's just going to be nh over four over sorry two l. So now I need to multiply this. Sorry, I took the square root already. I need to multiply this by the square root of this. So when I do that, I'll find that this product of variances is going to be L over 2n pi times the square root of n squared pi squared over 3 minus 2 times nh over 2L. So the L's here will cancel. The n's will cancel. And I'll have h over 2 pi, so that's just h bar times this square root. All right, so we have a fairly compact expression. And now this is something that can um, essentially equate with delta x delta p. And we can see that uh, the expectations of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, as we laid it out initially here, are that this value would have to be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. Well, this number, as it turns out, for all values of n that are allowed, remember n can be 1, 2, 3, and so forth, all of these will be greater than 1. So in fact, we have demonstrated that the product of these variances 
would be greater than or equal to h bar over 2 for the particle in a box wave functions. So this gives you a little bit of an idea of how this might actually play a role in our understanding of the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle isn't about being uncertain about something. It is about the wave-like nature of matter and the fact that whenever you have a wave, it's not possible to simultaneously measure both the position and the momentum. So it's giving an idea about the limits on our ability to measure observable properties.